We're going to look at here at dividing fractions. Before we talk about how to do it, I want to give you an example. 4 divided by 1 third. 4 divided by 1 third means how many 1 thirds are there in 4. Um, remember how dividing represents splitting a big thing into smaller pieces or splitting something into parts? That's what's going on here. 4 divided by 1 third means how many 1 thirds are there in 4. Well, I drew a picture. I drew 4 bars. You could think of them as chocolate bars or something. And then I split them into thirds. So if we're saying how many 1 thirds are there in 4, I'm going to count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 4 divided by 1 third is 12. There are 12 1 thirds in 4. Um, so this is how I would write that using symbols. 4 divided by 1 third is equal to 12. And one thing that's kind of weird about this, I personally think, is that almost always when we do division problems, the answer, up until now, the answer to a division problem or the quotient has been a smaller number. Whereas here, when I'm doing 4 divided by a third, the answer is actually bigger. And that's something that might happen. You could think about why or when. That's some kind of like a challenge exercise, is when is it that the quotient is bigger than the numbers you're dividing by. Another way I could write this 4 divided by 1 third business is as follows. I could write that as 4 times 3 over 1 to give me the 12. And that's this rule that's here. This is the way we can remember how to divide fractions. Dividing fractions is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So dividing 4 divided by 1 third, that was the same thing as 4 times the reciprocal. 4 times 3 over 1. Or in this next example I put on the board, if I want to do 1 half divided by 3 fourths, and this is a key idea, the 1 half is going to stay the same, but I'm going to now multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply by 4 thirds. If I do that, multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and reduce if possible. Across the top I have 4 times 1, across the bottom I have 6, and then to reduce I can divide top and bottom both by 2 to give me the final result. So there's a couple of different things to take away. The first is that sometimes when you divide things, your answer, your quotient, might be bigger than the original numbers that you were working with. Um, and the second thing to take away is that when we're dividing fractions, what we do is we leave the same, or leave the first fraction the same, the second fraction we make it a reciprocal and change the sign to multiplication. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. Work it. Work it. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> <laughs> that should be... Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. 